Um, I will call the July 12th. 2021 meeting of the St. Paul Heritage Preservation Commission to order. Uh, so welcome to the Heritage Preservation Commission meeting. The Heritage Preservation Commission reviews applications for projects at heritage sites or within the heritage districts of the city of St. Paul. The commission also serves as an advisory body to the mayor and the city council on municipal heritage preservation matters for the city. All documentation utilized for this meeting is available on the commission website at www.stpaul.gov slash HPC, and no new documentation will be discussed or recognized at today's meeting. Notice of this meeting was posted in the legal ledger and sent to the St. Paul Citywide Early Notification System, or ENS. To sign up for ENS, please visit the city's website at www.stpaul.gov. If you have questions about notice, please contact the HBC staff. During this meeting, please mute your microphones except when recognized by the chair to speak. You can unmute yourself from your computer by pressing the microphone button or from your phone by pressing star six. After being recognized by the chair to speak, commissioners and staff will need to state their names before speaking and everyone else will need to state their name and address before speaking. Uh, all deliberation and voting will be done via a roll call conducted by the chair and staff will be monitoring microphones and muting participants as needed. <clears throat> and with that, I will take uh, a roll call of our commissioners. Uh, Commissioner George, are you with us today? I'm with you today. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Commissioner Bazat. Here. Thank you, Commissioner, you, Douglas? Commissioner Douglas. Commissioner Douglas is on vacation. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Lupke. Commissioner McDonald. Here. Hello. Um, no. Commissioner Nelson. Here. Hello. And Commissioner Paroka. Commissioner Wagner. We just went through that was uh, three again. Commissioner Lucky. Commissioner Paroka. And Commissioner Wagner. Okay. Um, so we have an agenda for our meeting today, and uh, I would entertain a motion and a second for adoption of the agenda. Commissioner Bazat, so move. Thank you. Nelson, second. Thank you. Uh, any opposition to the motion to approve the agenda? Adopt the agenda. Hearing none, we have uh, the agenda is adopted. Are there any conflicts of interest today? Hearing none. Um, then our first item of business is the uh, minutes for the June 14th, 2021 HPC meeting. And uh, those were posted to the website. And so I'm assuming everybody's had a chance to review those. Um, and I would, uh, can I have a motion um, that the minutes are true and correct and should be adopted? This is Nelson, so moved. Thank you. Uh, second on that. Commissioner George, second. Thank you. Any opposition to the motion to approve the minutes of the June 14th, 2021 meeting as true and correct? Hearing none, those minutes are adopted. So, um, our only items of business today are um, the CLG review of the eastbound Kellogg River Center Bridge and the Kellogg Third Street Bridge. And um, Mr. Goss, are you speaking to that those I, items I am. today? Yes. So, uh, first of all, I, I know there was some. There's some, always some confusion with the the CLG comments. I just wanted to say. So uh, this is part of our certified local government contract between the city HPC and the state historic preservation office. 
Uh, the HPC can choose to comment on potential effects of any federally funded project that may have on the effects it may have on any historic resources and allow for public comment of, of the projects. The HPC will not be taking any formal action, but they will compile comments on possible effects to the applicant and SHPO. Um, so I, I was going to take um, both of both of these projects as one. Um, I'll start with uh, Kellogg and Third Street bridge replacement. Uh, project consists of removing bridges at eastbound Kellogg Boulevard and Exchange Street. New eastbound Kellogg Boulevard will consist of two traffic lanes, a right run lane and sidewalk. The vertical profile on Kellogg will be raised approximately six inches. Uh, Exchange Street will consist of two traffic lanes and a separated trail. Uh, the vertical profile of Exchange Street will be raised a maximum of approximately three feet, and the horizontal alignment will shift slightly to the north. Uh, in addition, Loading Dock Road will become a one-way loop, and the addition of a separate exit lane between the existing Loading Dock Road entrance. Uh, the eastbound Kellogg at River Center bridge replacement. This project will consist reconstruct Kellogg Boulevard, Third Street, retaining walls, approach, roadway, and the bridges. Uh, the preliminary project limits extend from Broadway Street to Mounds Boulevard. The project involves demolition of the current structure and reconstruction of piers, abutments, beams, bridge deck, railing, parapet, and approach roadways. The proposed bridge will accommodate four traffic lanes and a shared bicycle pedestrian facilities in both eastbound and westbound directions. Uh, the proposed determination for both proposals is no adverse effect. Uh, no historic property would be physically affected by the project, nor would visually affect the character of an historic property. Uh, which there are several historic properties around and you could read the uh, those are all listed in the report. And the staff recommendation is the, the two sites are in close proximity to several designated and eligible historic sites. Uh, replacement of the bridges and associated work should not have any detrimental effect to any of the adjacent listed or eligible historic resources. Uh, staff recommends concurrence with the agency determinations. <coughs> any questions? Uh, Chair, I have a question for George, Commissioner Bazaar. Yeah, Commissioner Bazaar. You know, I've been doing uh, or have done over the past a lot of work on Cap Wigington, and are the piers and parts of the bridge that run um, from Wabasha to Robert, well, you know, about Robert, uh, along Second Street that sort of doesn't exist, you know, it's the parking lot and that little feeder street that heads down off the Wabasha Bridge. But <clears throat> some of those appear to be original if you look at them from across the river. And those are Cap Wigington designs. Um, are those to be demolished? Um. Perhaps one of the project managers or okay. Renee Barnes with MDOT can answer that question. I can do that. I'm happy to harass Renee. Hi, Renee. Hi, Barb. <laughs> um, I am not 100% sure that the um, about what piers are being demolished. However, I am sure that we have, MDOT has surveyed that bridge and those structures and they are not eligible. So either they are missing too many of the historic material um, that CAP originally designed that it doesn't um, have integrity anymore. Oh, cool. All right. Well, having I know. <laughs> been working on it for another project, um, I needed to ask. And as I say, when you look at it without monoculars from the other side of the river, like from... <laughs> Uh, Raspberry Island or Navy Island or whatever that's called now. Um, it's difficult to tell what what's original, what's repair, what's replacement. So thanks. Any other questions uh, for staff on on these two um, 
issues. This is Nelson. I have a question. Um, question Nelson. Given that uh, a huge amount of money is going to be spent on this project, I wonder, um, is there a way, might there be a way um, to wrangle a little bit of money for, say, a historical marker um, in the nearer to Seven Corners area uh, about old Third Street? Seems like this is an opportunity um, you know, the bridge is invisible. People are not going to notice it. Um, but it's a very historic location in the history of our city. Uh, what do we think? Any chance? Yeah, that it's, that's definitely uh, a form of mitigation, if you think. I mean, I, I, um, it's, it's a comment. I mean, a lot of communities do those type of markers. Um, I'm not sure... The budget or if there's room in the budget but uh it's a comment you can make and uh it would be taken under consideration by public works uh mdot and the shippo um under the circumstances uh in addition to the comment i just made or the question i asked would it be more helpful to um, perhaps note some of the historic structures that used to be there Possibly. Um, maybe it's something that uh, also has a reference to Cap Wigington and his previous work on the that area. I don't know. I second that idea, Commissioner Nelson, and particularly and Wigington as well. I mean, Lord knows along there, <laughs> there used to be all kinds of things, including, of course, uh, West Publishing. Um, and you know, lots of historic structures from the early days. Um, so just one more question, George, is there a way if I wanted to, uh, and maybe with Commissioner Bizat, uh, write a, a paragraph um, and submit that to someone? Sure, if you wanna put something together, um we can certainly have that as part of our comments as well, uh, a suggestion. As well, I could also add tons of illustrations. The drawings are all at the Northwest Architectural Archive, and I've down, they've digitized them as part of the Umbra African American Collections Project, and um, so there are tons of them. Okay, so Commissioner Bazat, let's you and I communicate about yep. putting something together. Yep. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions for staff on, on these two uh, projects? Uh, this is Renee Barnes from MidDot again. I just want to offer one point of clarification, if I may. Sure. Um, so under Section 106, um, the only way we would need to do mitigation items would be is if there was an adverse effect determination. So typically under a determination of no adverse effect, there would be no cause to need or do mitigation items. Exactly. And it's certainly something we can check with the city about as well. <clears throat> I do have one more question and maybe I should be saving these for. I've tried to read through all of the project descriptions and all of the documentation we received. I don't see anything about any changes to the mall itself between Wabasha and Robert? Will that remain untouched, George? I, I believe so. I believe this is just the, the, the bridge areas, the roadway areas. But it again, the project. To me. Chair, Chair and Commissioners, um, if I may interject, uh, good afternoon. I am Brent Christensen. I'm one of the engineers with Public Works and Bridge Engineering. Um, I'd like to provide just a bit of clarification. The, the eastbound Kellogg project limits are actually from um, seven corners and extend eastward only as far as Market Street. Um, so the areas of the Second Street Bridge and Kellogg Mall are actually in between the two projects and not within the scope of this project. Um, 
that bridge is, um, as you mentioned, um, you know, has has is, is quite unique. Uh, it is another yet another bridge built on the bluff to support Kellogg Boulevard, and it will surely um, need some um, serious rehabilitation or replacement in the relatively near future. Um, but th that bridge itself is actually um, east of Wabasha and outside of the project limits for these two projects. Thank you. And, and this Commissioner Bazadigan, so, I, or should I wait until, I was just going to say, it's just that it is within the area of in, uh, a potential effect, so that's why it's always on the maps. And it was a little difficult to determine which colors. There's a lot of cross hatching and stuff. So thanks, George. Thanks, uh, Mindat and St. Paul Bridge folks for your clarification. Really appreciate it. OK, then uh, any other questions for staff at this point? Um, let me just run through the roll quickly to just make sure we Got everybody still online. Commissioner George, any questions for staff? No questions at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Bazat, any further questions? No, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Douglas, any further questions? No, oh, no, she's not she's not here today. Sorry. Uh, Commissioner Lump, uh, Commissioner McDonald. Uh, no questions. Uh, Commissioner Nelson, any further questions? Nothing more. Okay, thank you. Um, then is there, um, Ms. Um, Burns or Mr. Christensen, did you um, want to make a presentation on these projects to the commissioners? Commissioners, uh, this is Brent again, and I, uh, Dag, DeJenny, and I are here representing the projects, and we are certainly um, able and willing to present a summary or specifics um, on, on either or both projects, uh, should it be um, desired by any of the commission members. Okay. Sure. Um, well, with that, why don't I um, open it up to the commissioners then for any Questions, comments, suggestions. Um, like we've already had the one suggestion from Commissioner Nelson and Bazat about um, memorializing um, what was once there. Um, but if there's additional thoughts, comments, questions, um, now is your chance to raise those. This is Commissioner McDonald. Yes, Commissioner McDonald. Yes, I, I was curious as to. <clears throat> Uh, the schedule for groundbreaking and ultimate completion for the projects. Commissioner McDonald, uh, we have a schedule uh, set for the Kellogg Third Street Bridge project, which is from Broadway Street, uh, Lower Town area up to Dayton's Bluff. Um, that anticipated schedule would begin construction in the fall of 2022. And um, the, the, at the start of construction, uh, Kellogg Boulevard would be closed uh, to traffic for demolition and um, replacement. Uh, the closure on Kellogg Boulevard, so the, the main impact to traffic, uh, would last two years um, until the fall of 2024. Um, some other work will um, continue underneath the bridge primarily um, into the following year. Um, it is a very large structure, very tall, um, 2,000 feet long, and it crosses freeway and railroad, and, and that's the reason for that two-year construction time frame. Um, again, that project is funded. We did receive some special legislative uh, bond funding this past year. We also have uh, federal grant uh, dollars um, allotted to the project, and then, of course, a local share. Um, in terms of eastbound Kellogg, uh, the the schedule is a bit more ambiguous um, because we are simply not funded. Uh, we did make a request to the, um, the earmark program that is currently being considered and brought forward by the uh, federal legislature 
and um, the, we did make a project request, um, but to date um, that request hasn't been advanced. Um, we're also uh, planning to apply for any sort of stimulus packages that may come from federal government. Um, but at the moment, we have um, only about uh, $7 million of federal funds um, that, uh, that are actually um, risk being lost next year without advancing the project. And then we have about three million dollars of um, of local funds, um, but we have a project shortfall of, of nearly twenty four million dollars on that uh, project. So, uh, upon funding um, and in coordination with some of the other major projects in the area, including um, the River Center ramp redevelopment, um, we uh, we do anticipate another two year construction schedule uh, involving a number of closures. Um, on Eastbound Kellogg, Exchange Street Viaduct, um, and Eagle Parkway. <clears throat> well, thank you for the update. Uh, I asked uh, uh, in part because it's going to be extremely difficult to get to our HPC meetings in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Very noted, Commissioner. Uh, I'll have a word with our traffic engineer and see what he can do. Thank you. This, is, this will be a. Uh, yes. <clears throat> I, and I, I didn't see any traffic control drawings in the set that we received. So true. Yes, um, not not quite um, not quite there with the uh, with the design. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you again. You're welcome. Uh, this thank is you. any other question. Yeah, this yes, is Commissioner yes, Nelson. Uh, that reminds me of another one. There's another proposal out there for a sort of balcony uh, along the riverfront. Um, I'm not sure where that stands in terms of uh, funding or advancement, but if that should go forward, does that um, relate to these projects in some way? Commissioner, I, I will actually let uh, Dag introduce himself and answer um, that question because Dag has been coordinating very closely with um, other city staff, including our uh, funding and economic development project. Um, and he, he can probably um, mention not only that coordination, but also, um, as I mentioned, some of the ramp redevelopment or science museum plans, all of those structures being connected, physically connected to the Eastbound Bridge. Yes, thank you, Brent, and uh, thank you, Commissioner, uh, and also like to thank the uh, chairman as well. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to comment on this. Um, yes, we've been coordinating with, uh, like Brett mentioned, with uh, several uh, project stakeholders uh, nearby, one of them being the River Balcony Project. Um, it is somehow tied in the sense that uh, they will be near our structure, uh, but at this point, uh, there I haven't seen any specific plans. I believe they are in very preliminary conceptual level, um, uh, conceptual plan development level, and so but we are coordinating with them. Um, any, um, any impact would be limited to the west end of our project, closer to uh, yeah, west of the uh, Skyway Pier, uh, and that has to do mostly with uh, tying in the sidewalk area. Um, we're also working closely with the uh, with uh, PED and the River Center Ramp Redevelopment Project. Um, and we're looking at uh, interfaces um, in terms of uh, location of the ramp and, and the impact that our project would have uh, should the River Center ramp project uh, follow. Um, in terms of the Science Museum, we're also, we're also working there with the Director of Facilities and stakeholders there, um, specifically as to the impact of the drop-off zone on Kellogg. Uh, the drop-off zone will remain uh, the as as the as our bridge project, Eastbound Kellogg Bridge Project, is reconstructed, uh, we plan to uh, uh, retain uh, that drop-off zone that exists currently, uh, with uh, obviously improvements and modifications that are required. Um, so, in a nutshell, um, if I can uh, if I can say, I think we're this project is quite complicated. It does have. Um, direct impact and indirect impact to uh, facility owners nearby. And from the get go, uh, you know, we started the design back in May 2020, or we that's really when we onboarded uh, our design consultants. But we we've been engaged with uh, major stakeholders, um, including uh, the River Center Ramp, the Science Museum, 
Uh, and then on the north end, uh, the River Center itself, uh, the Excel Energy Center. Um, as you know, there's also a loading dock uh, that needs to, uh, that we need to maintain its uh, operations or, uh, or that we need to provide access to its operations, to its continued operations. And that's also something that we've been coordinating closely uh, with the River Center um, and Excel Energy Center. Um, so uh, it is a, um, it will be a significant undertaking. Uh, I am personally, I'm excited about this project. Uh, we are working closely with all the stakeholders uh, and we'll continue the coordination uh, as we as we continue with the design. Uh, this is uh, Nelson again. Uh, I could just follow up. I'm so glad you mentioned the River Center ramp. It, it seems to me a couple of years ago we were told that the replacement of that ramp was an absolute necessity. Um, haven't heard much about it since then. Um, is it true that that thing must be replaced? Commissioner, I would, I, if I may, I would have to uh, defer that uh, to uh, relevant authorities that think that are more capable of uh, commenting on, on that. Uh, I am uh, closely coordinating with them, but as to the status and the viability of the structure, I, I, uh, I am not uh, fully uh, in tune with that, so I would, I would have to defer that. Commissioner Nelson, um, it's true. Uh, planning and economic development um, is managing that project and, and really has the best current information. Um, what we do know is that uh, there, there were substantial repairs made to the ramp um, in, in that same time frame that they were looking at and um, seeking state funds. Um, similarly, those legislative bond funds and, um, you know, what, what we can say is that, uh, you know, in our conversation with PED, with River Center Ramp, they understand that our project, you know, is um, is kind of that near term, but um, un, unscheduled at this time because of funding. And they do believe that um, they can sustain the ramp, at least as it exists today, um, for a period of uh, at least a few more years. Um, that would allow us to construct were we to uh, obtain our funding in the near future. Uh, thank you. That's helpful. Sounds like there's going to be a lot of concrete poured over there. <laughs> Chair, I have one comment for the presenters. This is Commissioner Bazaar. Yes, Commissioner Bazaar. Yes, Commissioner <clears throat> I just want to say that I, I also had the question about River Center Ramp simply because I was going to say thank you, thank you for continuing the sidewalk from Kellogg on exchange from Kellogg to uh, Eagle Street. That <laughs> has been a difficult hike to get down that hill without going all the way around. So thank you. And we will hope that whatever river center ramp, uh, <clears throat> reconstruction, new construction, repair, whatever they do to it doesn't demolish uh, I, I presume that's what a 12 foot wide trail means is that it's a walking pedestrian path down the hill from Kellogg to yeah. Eagle. Is that correct? Thank you for that comment, uh, Commissioner. Yes, uh, that is correct. We do plan, uh, as you saw and as you right, rightfully mentioned, uh, the plans, the proposal, uh, the proposed plan is to include a shared use trail uh, through the Exchange Street Viaduct. Um, and that would allow uh, bikers and pedestrians uh, to make their way through the viaduct from the river level up to the uh, Kellogg uh, level. Hmm. Uh, that will be separated. There will be a concrete barrier that will separate uh, vehicular traffic from pedestrians. Um, and that will be a, um, you know, a, a major, I think, safety improvement uh, in the overall design. <laughs> that was an understatement, but thank you. Of course. Very much appreciated. Of course. Any other um, questions, comments, suggestions from the uh, commissioners on this part on these projects? Let me just run through the roll once more time, just to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Um, Commissioner George, anything to add? Not at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bazaar. No, thank you. Uh, Commissioner McDonald. No additional questions. 
Thank you. And Commissioner Nelson. Nothing more. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have a few comments um, uh, on those projects and we appreciate um, you coming in and uh, making yourselves available to our questions and hearing our suggestions. And um, I guess we're, we're done with that section of, or that item of business. And that being our, those being our only items of business, Chair? Um, unless there's, yes. I believe we need to make some sort of formal statement. There's a suggested wording at the end of the letter we received from HPC. Oh, that's right. I didn't mean to interrupt right, you. Right. We probably should. And I move to uh, make a motion if that works. Or I am raising my hand to make a motion. <laughs> OK. I move that the HPC concurs with the finding of no adverse effect as per the presented testimony, submitted documentation and information provided in the staff report. This is Nelson, I second. Thank you. Um, and then we will vote on that motion. Um, uh, Commissioner. Point of order, point of order. Um, <laughs> do, did we want to add something about uh, exploring signage or not? Uh, well, it seems to me that we received information from uh, Ms. Barnes of DOT that uh, requesting that type of documentation signage would come only if the HPC had a finding of evidence. And if this motion passes, that doesn't happen. So I think that we would have to pursue it with, hello, Brent, and those of you in public works. <laughs> with the city itself rather than doing it through this format. That's my understanding. This Correct. is Commissioner McDonald. I, I don't think. Yes, hi. <clears throat> um, on many of our MnDOT projects, um, even though mitigation wouldn't be mandated, uh, there's no reason we couldn't ask MnDOT or other agencies to uh, provide some historic context. In that case, I would <clears throat> modify my motion to read, I don't have exact wordage, that was in brackets, something to the effect of the uh, H. In addition, I, I, go ahead. I wrote it down, sorry. I wrote it okay. down, would you like me to? Please. Okay, what I have is that uh, signage that highlights the area's history uh, buildings lost and Cap Wigington's involvement in the area uh, was proposed or uh, in, suggested? In the uh, area of potential effect, I would say add in the APE. Okay. So in other words, in addition, comma, the Heritage Preservation Commission requests that the participating agencies investigate the uh, erection of a some sort of documentation regarding blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, and let's try saying it exactly that way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> see, see how that works? <laughs> Well, I think you mean historical marker rather than Thank documentation. You. Thank you. That I do. Uh, so maybe maybe we should um, just for so we're we're clear on what what what, uh, what the motion is here. Um, can we restate that again? The, the entire motion. I am moved that the HPC concurs with the finding of no adverse effect as per the presented testimony, submitted documentation, and information provided in the staff report. In addition, the HPC recommends the erection of an historical marker that will document the uh, area history, Sorry, can you area history, buildings lost and okay. Cap Wigington's involvement in the construction and architect Cap Wigington's involvement in the construction of the Kellogg Boulevard 
bridge between Wabasha and Robert. Since there's nothing left of what he did west of that. OK, thank you. Uh, and can I have a second then for that amended motion? This is Nelson, I second. Thank you. Um, and then I will, we, we have no further discussion on that motion, or do we have any further discussion on that motion? Technically you can if you want, but. <laughs> okay, you have your hand up there. Are you are you wanting to say something, Commissioner Bazette? Nope, okay. I lied. All right, let's, hearing none then, let's have a vote on that motion. Um, Commissioner George? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Bazat. Yes. Uh, Commissioner McDonald. Yes. And Commissioner Nelson. Yes. Okay, that motion carries. And with that, unless there's any other items of business anybody wants to um, raise, we are ready for a motion for adjournment. Nelson, so moved. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Thank you. Who, who second that? Does that? Yep. 